For four days each summer, every Major League ballpark sits quiet, but for one. The All-Star break focuses attention on not only the league's best, but one of its cathedrals, with this year's spotlight on the nation's capital and the home of the Washington Nationals. Next year, though, it will be Cleveland and Progressive Field. This will be the sixth time the Indians have hosted the Midsummer Classic. That's more than any other team in baseball, with three of those at Old Municipal Stadium holding slots 1, 2, and 3 when it comes to the largest crowds ever to see an All-Star game. Since the game was last here in 1997, so much about the festivities have changed, with the showcase morphing into a week-long build-up to the game itself. It's not just about that game. It's about what you can do with that platform to engage the community and get more people uh, uh, to, to feel a part of it. The events draw over an estimated 100,000 fans, 1,500 national media, with an economic impact in the $65 million range, or roughly a third of what we saw for hosting the week-long RNC. And then you tie that into Cleveland still being a finalist for other major events like um, the NBA All-Star Game, the NFL Draft, the NCAA Women's Final Four. I mean, there is a, there is a real chance that not only are we going to have this one premier event, but we could have multiple years potentially um, that you, know, you could almost look at it's, it's sort of the next really big thing after the RNC for Cleveland. In the meantime, a group from the Indians and Destination Cleveland went to Washington to get a better feel for what awaits. Some of sort of the geeky stuff of, of the flow and how they let people in, how they let people out, talking to their security, all kinds of different things. It gives you a sense of what we can expect. In Cleveland, Jack Kasich, News 5.